We are considering today the cause of a major aircraft accident involving a B-47. As always, there are lessons to be learned in reviewing in some detail the causes of any accident. The primary cause of this accident was misuse of flight controls during takeoff. This case points out once more that there's no such thing as flying the B-47 by habit or intuition. Every new mission sets up a new problem. Although I was there, this time we have more than an eyewitness account. We have a short strip of film which graphically portrays a portion of the accident. Don't expect Cinemascope in Technicolor. This is black and white record type photography shot by the base cameraman during a routine coverage of takeoffs. These takeoffs were filmed at Fairford, England on 1 May 1955 as several flights of B-47s returned to the United States. Most of the takeoffs were normal. Dash one computations for the B-47, 731 configuration, established takeoff distance as 7,400 to 7,700 feet. Takeoff speed was computed as 150 to 152 knots. Gross weights were 170 to 172,000 pounds. Visibility, six miles. Temperature, 54 degrees. There was a 20-knot crosswind component, 90 degrees to the runway. Trim tap settings for the 731 configuration aircraft called for two to four degrees nose down. And accordingly, each aircraft adhering to these settings made its takeoff smoothly. A hint of trouble to come is seen in aircraft number two of the third flight. A nose high condition, but fortunately corrected by an immediate application of elevator control. Number four of this flight already has a nose high condition, which continues to rise, finally resulting in a stall as the rear main wheels leave the ground. The camera was dropped in the excitement of the impending crash and no motion picture footage was obtained. But this was the result. Total loss by fire. However, the crew did escape the aircraft prior to the fire. Now let's take a look at the factors pertaining to the takeoff. The normal takeoff should have occurred at the 7,500 foot point. However, at the 5,500 foot point, the accident aircraft was already nose high and the forward main wheels had left the ground. At the 6,500 foot point, the nose was raised higher, possibly due to an application of a few degrees of elevator and the aircraft broke ground to a height of one and a half feet. At approximately 8,000 feet, the left wing and the number one engine hit the ground as the aircraft left the runway. The accident investigating board determined the cause of this accident to be improper application of flight controls during takeoff. The primary contributing factors to the accident were faulty crosswind takeoff technique and improper trim tab setting. According to the Dash 1, a crosswind takeoff requires that forward pressure be applied on the control column during takeoff, thus allowing the aft main gear to leave the ground first. This assures a nose down condition. Had the number four aircraft followed this procedure, an accident might have been eliminated. However, a far more important factor in this accident was the improper trim tab setting, especially for a heavyweight takeoff. This pilot was new to 731 series aircraft. And from habit and using the Dash 1 takeoff curves for early model B-47s, did carelessly apply the same curve to the later model aircraft. This resulted in a one degree nose up trim instead of four degrees nose down trend. This difference is small, but extremely important in relation to trim tab setting for heavyweight takeoffs. On the early models of the B-47, both elevated trim tabs are used. The right trim tab is operated manually by the pilot. The left trim tab is connected to the flaps and works in conjunction with them. 
a late model B-47 aircraft, the left trim tab is permanently set in a trail position. It no longer functions as a trim tab. Only the right trim tab is used and it is manually set by the pilot on takeoff. The MAC for the aircraft involved in this accident was 30.1 which required a four degree nose down trim setting. The aircraft commander actually rolled in one degree nose up. This setting was correct for this aircraft. But for this aircraft, it was incorrect. This wrong setting resulted in the stall you just witnessed. Let's review now how the compounded errors affected the roll of the aircraft down the runway. The motion study you saw earlier happened so fast that it was difficult to follow. We have here a series of stop frame photos, which we can study in more detail. This first scene shows the aircraft approximately 5,500 feet down the runway. The front wheels are just leaving the ground. The next scene shows the nose rising. This was attributed to the right trim tab being set in a nose up position. By the way, the pilot never realized throughout his entire takeoff roll that his nose was in a high position indicated in these pictures. Here in this third picture, you can see that the nose is extremely high. It appears that the pilot applied a few degrees of elevator control, causing the nose to rise still higher and compounding, of course, the original air made in trim setting. It is important to note that if the pilot had realized his nose high condition at this time, he could have applied proper elevator control and possibly have prevented this accident. This frame shows both the forward main and aft main landing gears off the ground. Takeoff is being attempted, but the aircraft is indicating only 142 knots, nine knots below computed takeoff speed. Definitely insufficient flying speed. The consequence of having rolled in the wrong trim setting has given this pilot the impression he is ready for takeoff. He has completely lost his orientation. This shows the beginning of the stall. The left wing is starting to drop as speed decreases. At this point, directional control is lost and the aircraft veers to the left and off the runway. This photo is a continuation of the action of the left wing dropping towards the ground. And here the wing and number one engine actually touched the ground. The aircraft was approximately 8,000 feet down the runway at this point. The impact causes no appreciable damage as the aircraft more or less rights itself and continues to roll on both gears. The aircraft continued on a course diagonal to the runway when the recording camera ran out of film. We have here an aerial scene that was shot some time later. The number one engine again struck as the aircraft crossed an inactive runway, continued at a rapid rate, jumped a ditch here, 10 feet wide and six feet deep. It continued across the cultivated field until it began to settle in soft mud. The fuel tank ruptured at this point, continued another 210 feet where it crossed the ditch approximately five feet wide and three feet deep. Continued another 170 feet where the aircraft came to a stop and immediately burst into flames. These flames spreading back to the point of fuel tank rupture. The entire roll of the aircraft was 2,725 feet. The entire roll was affected with the gear down. The rugged construction of the aircraft enabled the crew to effect emergency exit and escape the burning aircraft. Now we'll give you another look at the accident portion of the record film. Forward main leaves the ground, nose rises, aft main leaves ground, flying speed inadequate, aircraft stalls and hits. And this was the end result. What conclusions are to be reached as a result of this accident? One, 
a general misuse of flight controls during takeoff. Two, an improper technique during crosswind takeoffs. Three, the pilot, while being aware of the change in trim tab system for early model aircraft, did carelessly extract the wrong information from the pilot's handbook. Of these three points, I would like to stress the last. Aircraft changes in this modern age occur almost daily. To keep aircraft in one operational piece, as well as the crew, we must be continually alert to these changes. I've long since come to the conclusion that nothing can be taken for granted. And for obvious reasons, I agree with Marilyn. I hate a careless man. white record type photography shot by the base cameraman during a routine coverage of takeoffs. These takeoffs were filmed at Fairford, England on 1 May 1955 as several flights of B-47s returned to the United States. Most of the takeoffs were normal. Dash 1 computations for the B-47 731 configuration established takeoff distance as 7400 to 7700 feet. Takeoff speed was computed as 150 to 152 knots. Gross weights were 170 to 172,000 pounds. Visibility, six miles. Temperature, 54 degrees. There was a 20 knot crosswind component, 90 degrees to the runway. Trim tab settings for the 731 configuration aircraft called for two to four degrees nose down. And accordingly, each aircraft adhering to these settings made its takeoff, followed this procedure, an accident might have been eliminated. However, a far more important factor in this accident was the improper trim tab setting, especially for a heavyweight takeoff. This pilot was new to 731 series aircraft and from habit in using the dash one takeoff curves for early model B-47s, did carelessly apply the same curve to the later model aircraft. This resulted in a one degree nose up trim. Instead of four degrees nose down trim. This difference is small, but extremely important in smoothly. A hint of trouble to come is seen in aircraft number two of the third flight. A nose high condition, but fortunately corrected by an immediate application of elevator control. Number four of this flight already has a nose high condition, which continues to rise, finally resulting in a stall as the rear main wheels leave the ground. The camera was dropped in the excitement of the impending crash and no motion picture footage was obtained. But this was the result. Total loss by fire. However, the crew did escape the aircraft prior to the fire. Now let's take a look at the factors pertaining to the takeoff. The normal takeoff should have occurred at the 7,500 foot point. However, at the 5,500 foot point, the accident aircraft was already nose high and the forward main wheels had left the ground. At the 6,500 foot point, the nose was raised higher, possibly due to an application of a few degrees of elevator. And the aircraft broke ground to a height of one and a half feet. At approximately 8,000 feet, the left wing and the number one engine hit the ground as the aircraft left the runway. The accident investigating board determined the cause of this accident to be improper application of flight controls during takeoff. The primary contributing factors to the accident were faulty crosswind takeoff technique and improper trim tab setting. According to the Dash 1, a crosswind takeoff requires that forward pressure be applied on the control column during takeoff, thus allowing the aft main gear to leave the ground first. This assures a nose down condition. At the number four aircraft,
We are considering today the cause of a major aircraft accident involving a B-47. As always, there are lessons to be learned in reviewing in some detail the causes of any accident. The primary cause of this accident was misuse of flight controls during takeoff. This case points out once more that there's no such thing as flying the B-47 by habit or intuition. Every new mission sets up a new problem. Although I was there, this time we have more than an eyewitness account. We have a short strip of film which graphically portrays a portion of the accident. Don't expect cinemascope in Technicolor. This is black.